Hey everyone, Ryan Rokliff from Hyper here. Uh, what I would like to do is share a, a little story that we had uh, w within our own internal organization um, in light of, you know, uh, no before and them sharing their story around a nation state actor, which was North Korea trying to uh, become part of their organization, uh, as well as a couple other stories that we've had heard from our customers where they've had interview fraud or they had onboarded somebody who was not in the interview and they don't find out until a later time. For us here, we were looking to onboard a contractor uh, through a contracting agency. And what we have here that helps us out in this onboarding process is called HyperAffirm. Uh, HyperAffirm is our, our IDV uh, type part of our platform uh, and allows us to link a physical identity to a digital identity before we issue a credential. And for us, when we issue credentials, they're pass keys or our, our hyper authenticator. There are zero passwords in our world, so we are pretty critical on uh, how we're going to issue those credentials to uh, employees. So for this scenario, uh, HyperFirm is configured full tilt. It has everything turned on. Uh, so we do quite a few checks along the way. Uh, for our, our configuration, uh, we have the uh, employee's home address on file. We have a mobile number on file. And we will ask them to also submit a document, uh, a government issued ID and perform a selfie for matching. And then we also go into a video chat uh, with the, the individual who's being onboarded. So for this scenario, the individual was uh, going through the process with HyperAffirm. They submitted their ID. They then were challenged for the one-time passcode. They had possession of their phone. So this is a good thing. It checks out. Phone number is valid. Uh, and then we identified in this process that their browser location was very, very far from what was on file. Now, this is a signal. It's not saying, hey, this is, you know, incredible risk because we are looking at a contractor that is working from outside the United States at the time. Uh, they expressed that they were on VPN. And this is totally normal for people outside uh, the U.S. from time to time. So. Uh, we continued on in that process, but when it got to the doc auth uh, portions, which was taking a picture of the government issued ID, as well as taking a selfie, uh, there was some challenges. Uh, in efforts to help support the uh, onboarding process, we had some tech guys get on and start trying to work through if there was computer issues, camera issues, uh, whatever was going on on the individual's uh, machine. And once we had that all rectified, we asked this individual to go through the process once more. So they were able to successfully uh, have their phone number uh, validated again. And this time their browser came up in another location. So while that was a little bit suspicious, jumping VPNs very drastically, uh, this was a little suspicious, but we saw a second item. And that second item was their browser language had changed. Um, so this means that there was a little bit of something a little bit more suspect. We're still going to move forward because we still get to verify the document and the individual. So that individual then submitted their government issued ID and then they took their selfie. But this time we didn't get a good match. There were some discrepancies between that selfie and what was in the government issued ID. And we still wanted to move forward. We still have a video verification component we can walk through. We can then ask, we can challenge, we can, we can have a, uh, another iteration of how to verify and validate what may have gone wrong. But then again, we had a camera problem and the individual chose to exit the process. Uh, so we reached out to our contracting firm and we had asked them, hey, you know, there's some suspicious things going on here, everything all right. Uh, they said that there was uh, some concerns with the behavior and they will look to address it. Uh, the next day we were informed by this agency that the individual is not looking to move forward with us at Hyper as well as they're not gonna move forward with that agency. So what we can do here is pretty much lump this into that we had an interview fraud case. Uh, somebody had interviewed great. Uh, the individual worked effectively through the interview process. And when it came to onboarding, there was most likely a transition of identity uh, that was going to probably go to somebody else. And once again, we wanted to share this story because we believe that this is more common. And I think that it's safe that if you have remediation efforts or you have something like Hyper and Firm, you have a lot more confidence in how you can do these things and also mitigate these things going forward. So this is a pretty, pretty big topic in my opinion. Um, and you know, all I can ask for is everybody stay vigilant out there and have a good one.